once I started tinkering with uh, electrical motors etc it wasn't long before the topic of supercapacitors and batteries became an interest so I started playing around and uh, built a few homemade supercapacitors I specifically tried using carbon fiber nice thing about carbon fiber uh, is that it's at the same time a uh, current collector as well as the surface electrode onto which the charge deposits um, doesn't quite have the surface area of activated carbon but uh, nevertheless quite a useful thing to experiment with um, I tried all kinds of electrolytes uh, this is choline chloride and uh, antifreeze so it's supposed to give you a deep eutectic solvent or some such I got results but nothing too spectacular um, what I want to show you is one or two interesting things that I've discovered I'm not sure if it's something new uh, well the first part is just uh, what I believe is called an aluminium air battery where we've got an aluminium electrode and carbon and an electrolyte and what I want to show is how potent this particular combination is with uh, ferric chloride as an electrolyte this is sold at the local pharmacy as uh, steel drops just a mineral supplement iron supplement um, very dilute I think it's only about uh, what's that 15 percent you do get ferric chloride in much higher concentrations uh, it's uh, an etching fluid for PC boards I've got some of that which I'll show a little bit later in the video but uh, to get started let me just show you how powerful this tiny little battery is I've got a three millimeter wide piece of aluminium I'm just going to add a separator just a piece of tissue paper And this is just a single strand of carbon fiber, just the normal structural stuff that you would use in a composite layup. And now a bit of the magic juice. And look at the voltage there, 1.3 volts and I've got a small jewel thief circuit okay it's still not quite producing enough current to light the LED let's give it a bit of a jab there see if we can get the motor going and there she goes let's add more of that highly concentrated ferric chloride this does destroy the aluminium in no time at all and off she goes Okay, we've got some light on that LED as well. That dual thief circuit just boosts the voltage high enough to get the LED going. It requires about 3 volts for the LED. I'm only putting out about, what is that, 0.4 under load. Now using such a small strip uh, doesn't give me a particular uh, impressive runtime. It does help topping it up with ferric chloride every now and again. Just get another drop in there. There it goes again. And then one additional chemical which seems to have some effect is potassium permanganate or Connie's crystals. Just a tiny bit. 
and it really seems to boost the voltage. In particular the open circuit voltage as well. You can see it actually powers that LED quite nicely.